Welcome back to 8051 Microcontroller Programming. In previous two videos, I have discussed basics required for writing assembly language programs. I have discussed architecture, addressing modes, pin details, then how to study the instruction set. In this video, I am going to discuss the steps in assembly language programming. What is an assembly language? An assembly language is a low level programming language specially designed for a specific type of a processor or a controller. Means assembly level language will be there even for a microprocessor and, uh, or even for a microcontroller. It is a specifically designed a low level programming language. A assembly language program can be converted to a machine language using a software called assembler. As we know, so this assembler, it is a software or a, you can also call it as a program which will convert assembly language program to a machine language program. Nothing but it will going to generate a machine codes. Because machine, machine will only understand the machine codes. If we write the program in assembly language, we require some intermediator which will take assembly language as an input and produce a machine codes. So that intermediator which will convert a assembly language to a machine language is called assembler. Assembly language uses, uses mnemonics to represent low level machine instructions. These machine instructions are also called as upcodes like move, add, sub, subtract. So such codes are called as mnemonics. A program written in assembly language consists of series of mnemonic processor instructions, directives and data. So you know what are directives. So directives, these are the statements which will give the directions to the assembler. So where to locate the codes, so when to start the assembling, where to stop the assembling, all such directions will be given by this statement. The statements which will give the directions to the assembler, such statements are called assembler directives. And we can use comments in a program to understand the source code easily by others who read the program. If I am going to write a program and somebody is going to refer for what a specific purpose I have written a, some part of a code or say a whole program say can be explained using a comments. So these are the steps in assembly language programming. So four important steps are there. The first step is to edit the program. We will make use of editor program and we will edit the file. The Normally the output of the editor program will be file name dot asm and some editor will give the extension as dot src and that file will be given to a assembler program as an input and this assembler program is going to produce two important files one file be having an extension dot lst and another file will be having an extension dot obj and such dot obj files will be given to a input to a linker program which will going to produce a file the extension dot abs which we call it as a absolute file okay the file with a dot obj extension is called as a object file the file with a dot list extension is called as a list file and absolute file will be given to a oh program which is called as object to hex converter program and it will going to produce the hex file this hex file we are going to feed to a any microcontroller device so these steps we are going to discuss in detail the first one is editing the first step is to edit the program using one of the many editors available so what is an editor an editor is a program which allows us to create a file containing the assembly language instructions means editor is responsible for creating a file and that file will contain assembly language instructions the editor or a word processor should produce an ASCII file. Remember one thing dear students, whatever the editor we use, it should be able to produce ASCII file, means the file containing the ASCII codes. The extension of source file that can be either .asm or .src depending on the assembler. Some assemblers will make use of .asm and some will make use of .src. So some of the examples of editors are notepads which you are very much familiar with windows, gedit and vim these are the editors available on linux operating system. So we can use any of the editors but one thing is those editors should be able to produce the ASCII file. Second step is to convert the assembly language program to machine code and the process is called assembling. Here the source file created in step 1 should be given as input to the assembler. So as I have shown 
here in this step so whatever the source file produced by the editor should be given as a input to the assembler program so and assembler will produce an object file and say a list file the object file will have extension obj and list file will have extension lst and this object file is an intermediate file that contains essential machine code and linker information means say it is not a complete machine code that object file will contains essential machine codes which are required to generate a final machine codes and even it is going to uh, contain some linker information which it is going to link to a, some other object files like say if we have used some built in functions let us consider say it is going to link to a object file of that built in functions okay and the lst file is optional and uh, this file is useful to the programmer for the purpose of uh, checking syntax error uh, this file contains all the opcodes addresses and even the errors that the assembler detects the list file can be accessed by an editor such as notepad or gedit and important thing is the programmer uses this list file to find the syntax error normally this the output of the list file will be displayed on on a simulator so if it's not displayed we can open a list file uh, using notepad or gedit and we can see what are the syntax error those are there in a assembly language program file and the third step is linking so linking is the third step in assembling the linker program takes a one or more object files and produces an absolute object file with a dot abs extension the absolute file contains the machine code so it contains machine code it contains the data on which that code will work and even it contains the memory locations uh, along with the some debugging information the file is called absolute because memory locations of data and the code are not relocatable whatever the memory locations will be given there so those memory locations cannot be relocatable such absolute file can be directly used by simulators to test programs so the simulators like, such as keel and other softwares will going to make use of this absolute file and where say so this absolute file can be directly executed by such simulators important thing is this absolute file will contain a locations fixed locations which cannot be changed means that file cannot be relocatable so and the file cannot be so uploaded onto a machine 8051 machine say so to convert this absolute file to a machine code means a hex code we need a program called object to hex code converter the absolute file is fed to a program called object to hex converter which creates a file with say dot hex extension this hex file contains a final machine codes which can be loaded onto end machine for execution normally say some exploder programs or softwares such as flash magic usb isp programmer and there are so many like pro isp so such programs can be used to load the x file onto a say target machine okay these are four different uh, steps which will be there in a assembly level programming first one is editing using editor program second one is assembling the, when we start assembling say so the assembling will contain uh, assembler program linker program and a uh, object to hex converter program if at all we are using a simulator we don't use uh, this uh, oh program the linker program itself will produce absolute file and that file can be uh, directly executed on a simulator if at all uh, we want to upload the machine codes onto a target machine then we require this uh, oh program which will convert a absolute file to a machine codes which will be in terms of hex codes so these are the steps that will be followed in a say, assembly level programming with this we'll stop today in a next session i am going to discuss installation and usage of 8051 microcontroller ides id stands for integrated development environments now to execute assembly lang uh, assembly language programs we require some ides so basically i am going to introduce two types of ides one is keel and another one is mcu8051 ide basically keel will be used with windows and mcu8051 ide is a best ide uh, which is open source can be used with windows or linux operating system so in next class i am going to discuss installation and how to use these ides for assembly la assembly language programming with this i'll stop here 
will continue in next class thank you for watching